In this lecture, I'll talk to you about the origin and spread of cardiac impulse. You already know that the muscles of the heart need to contract and relax in a rhythmical manner to allow the pumping of blood from the heart to the different parts of the body. And this contraction and relaxation of the muscles of the heart is the mechanical activity that allows the blood to be pumped to the different parts of the body. And for this mechanical activity to occur, there needs to be an electrical activity that precedes it. And this can be combated with the analogy of uh, how the fan is switched on. So if you want uh, the fan to run, you need to first plug it on. And plugging it on causes the electrical activity. And this electrical activity of plugging the fan switch on leads to the mechanical activity where the fan blades run giving us the air that we need. So just like that in our heart muscles also there needs to be an electrical activity that precedes the mechanical activity of contraction and relaxation. And this electrical activity is made possible through the conducting system of the heart. The cardiac muscles have certain special properties, one of which is autorhythmicity, where auto means automatic, and rhythmicity is something that happens in regular intervals. In this context, autorhythmicity means that the cardiac muscles are capable of generating their own impulses without the need of any external nervous innovation. So the cardiac muscles can generate their own own impulses by itself which is where the term automatic or auto comes in and rhythmicity is this generation of impulses occurs in a rhythmic manner that is in regular intervals so the cardiac muscles are capable of auto rhythmicity that is they can generate their own impulses without any external nervous innovation. Just by itself, the cardiac muscles can generate their own impulses in a rhythmic manner, that is in regular intervals. And this property of the cardiac muscle is known as autorhythmicity. And this autorhythmicity is made possible because of the presence of specialized type of muscle cells present in the heart known as the pacemaker cells and these cells are capable of generating their own repetitive action potentials which is the automatic impulse that helps in the property of autorhythmicity. And the pacemaker tissue also makes a conduction system that helps conduct or spread the impulses throughout the heart. The tissues of the conduction system of the heart are also known as the junctional tissues and it is formed of the SA node or the sinoatrial node which you see here and as you can see this is the right atrium and this is the left atrium. The SA node is located in the right atrium and here is the superior vena cava and you can notice that the SA node is located near the opening of the superior vena cava. And you also have the AV node or the atrioventricular node and as you can see, it is located between the atrium and the ventricle. It is between the right atrium and the right ventricle. That's the AV node or the atrioventricular node. 
and connecting the SA node and the AV node or the internodal tracks. There is anterior, middle and posterior internodal tract. And the SA node is also having connection with the left atrium through the interatrial tract. It is also called as the Backman's bundle. And from the AV node, the conduction system continues as the bundle of his that is located in the interventricular septum. The bundle of his then divides into the left and right bundle branch from where arises the Perkin J fibers that you see here. The Perkin J fibers are also called as the conduction pathways. So these are the parts of the conduction system of the heart. So there is the SA node or the sinoatrial node located in the right atrium near the opening of the superior vena cava. There is the AV node or the atrioventricular node located between the right atrium and the right ventricle. There are internodal tracts, anterior, middle and posterior, connecting the SA node to the AV node. There is the Backman's bundle or the interatrial tract, connecting the SA node with the left atrium. And from the AV bundle arises the bundle of his that divides into the left and right bundle branches, from where arises the Perkin J fibers or the conduction pathways. Out of these, the SA node or the sinoatrial node is the primary pacemaker of the heart. This is the primary pacemaker because it sets the pace for the entire heart. To further explain, say the SA node generates impulses at the rate of 60 impulses in a minute then the heart also beats at the rate of 60 beats in a minute. So the SA node is the primary pacemaker because it sets the pace for the number of times the heart beats in a minute. That is uh, what happens in normal healthy conditions. SA node acts as the pacemaker or the primary pacemaker of the heart. And normally, Left by itself, the SA node can generate impulses at the rate of 100 to 120 impulses in a minute. But this does not happen in normal healthy conditions because of the presence of something known as the vagal tone. That is, the SA node is constantly innervated by the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve provides it the parasympathetic nerve supply. Due to the constant parasympathetic innervation by the vagus nerve, the rate of the SA node is reduced to 60 to 80 beats in a or 60 to 80 impulses in a minute. So due to the constant innovation by the vagus node, sorry, vagus nerve, the there is constant parasympathetic supply to the SA node leading to the inhibition of the or the reduction of the number of impulses generated by the SA node from 100 to 120 to 60 to 80 in a minute. And that's the reason why the normal heart rate is 60 to 80 beats in a minute based on the number of impulses that are generated normally by the SA node. Apart from the SA node, the AV node, the atrial muscle, and the ventricular muscles 
are also capable of generating their own impulses, thereby capable of being the pacemakers. But SA node is the part of the conduction system that generates maximum number of impulses in a minute. So the SA node beats at the rate of 60 to 80 beats in a minute. And due to this reason, in normal health, when the SA node is functioning normally, it sets up the pace for the entire heart and becomes the primary pacemaker of the heart. Only at situations when the SA node is not functioning, then the other parts of the conduction system takes over to become the pacemaker tissue. So when the SA node is not functioning, then the AV node takes over and the heart then beats at the rate of the AV node. If that again fails, then the atrial muscle takes over. If that too fails, then the ventricular muscles take over and then the heart beats at the rate of the ventricular muscles. So, though the primary pacemaker of the heart is the SA node, if that doesn't function normally, then there are certain other parts in the conduction system such as the AV node, atrial muscle and the ventricular muscle which can also act as the pacemaker. But in normal healthy situation when the SA node is functioning normally, the SA node sets up the pace for the entire heart as it has the highest number of impulses in a minute. But remember that whenever any other part of the conduction system takes over the function of being the pacemaker, it is always abnormal and not a sign of a healthy heart. You know that the primary action of the heart is to pump blood to different parts of the body to ensure that all the tissues of the body receive adequate oxygenation and nourishment and in order for that to occur the heart muscles need to contract and relax rhythmically that is in regular intervals and this needs to occur repetitively because the heart has to pump blood constantly without any interval without any breaks the heart needs to constantly pump blood to different parts of the body. So in order for that to occur, that is in order for the heart to pump blood continuously, the muscles also need to contract and relax continuously. And that contraction and relaxation of the muscles is the mechanical activity that helps the heart to pump blood. And you know that in order for the mechanical activity to occur, there needs to be an electrical activity that precedes it. So the contraction and relaxation of the muscles is the mechanical activity. And in order for that to occur, there needs to be electrical activity that precedes it. And this electrical activity is brought about by the conducting system of the heart. And you know that the primary pacemaker of the heart is the SA node or the sinoatrial node which is located in the right atrium. It is the primary pacemaker because it sets up the pace for the entire heart. So the SA node is the primary pacemaker that generates impulses on its own. And the impulses that are generated in the SA node travel down to the AV node through the internodal tracts. And as they travel down to the AV node, at the same time, they also simultaneously travel to the left atrium through the Bachmann's bundle or the interatrial tract. So the impulses that are generated in the SA node pass to the AV node through the internodal tract and to the left atrium through the interatrial tract 
and this occurs simultaneously. And as the inverses pass through these structures, they also spread to the area surrounding it. So as the inverses pass from the SC node to the AV node, they also spread to the muscle cells in the right atrium. And as the inverses pass to the left atrium, they also spread to the muscle cells in the left atrium. And the muscle cells in the left atrium respond to it by depolarizing and then generating action potentials. And as the muscle cells generate action potentials, the cells then contract. This leads to the contraction of the right atrium and the left atrium. And once they contract, they push blood from the atria to the ventricles. And once that is done, the muscles then relax and then they stop pushing the blood. So that's how the muscles of the right atria contract and relax. And after that, once the impulses reach the AV node, that is the atrioventricular node, they then pass to the bundle of his and then to the rest of the conducting system. And one thing that you have to note here is, as the impulses reach the AV node or the atrioventricular node, there is a delay. So there is a delay that occurs at the AV node or the atrioventricular node and this is known as the AV nodal delay. There are three reasons why this delay occurs at the AV node. The three reasons are, so there are some transitional fibers that connect the internodal tract with the AV node and these transitional fibers are small and they also conduct impulses at a slow rate. So due to that slowness, there is a delay in the transmission of impulses through the, through the transitional fibers to the AV node. And also the fibers in the AV node themselves are small and they also conduct impulses at a slow rate. And this further leads to delay in the AV node. In addition to this, the cells present in the AV node are small and they do not have enough gap junctions. So they are not able to quickly spread the impulses leading to further delay. So the conduction through the AV node is slow. There is a delay that occurs at the AV node known as the AV nodal delay. There is a delay of 0.1 second. The reasons for this delay are that there is some transitional fiber connecting the internodal tract to the AV node which are small and they conduct impulses at a slow rate. And also the fibers in the AV node themselves conduct impulses at a slow rate. In addition to that, there are very few gap junctions connecting the fibers in this part of the pathway, further reducing the speed of transmission, leading to a slowness in the conduction in the AV node causing the AV nodal delay, which is about 0.1 second. This delay that occurs in the AV node is considered to be useful. Why is it useful? Because just imagine, if this delay were not to occur, what can happen? So if there is no delay occurring in the AV node, then the impulses from the SA node will be reaching the AV node and then to the left atrium and at the same time quickly the impulses will also pass to the other parts of the conducting system. 
So the imbuses will spread to the atrial muscles and the ventricular muscles at the same time. If that were to happen, then the atrial muscles will be contracting and pushing blood to the ventricle. So from the atria, the blood will be pushed to the ventricle. And if the ventricles are also contracting at the same time, then they do not have enough time to get filled with blood from the atria. So if the ventricles were also to contract at the same time, they don't have enough time to be filled with blood. And as they have to contract immediately, they will have to push the blood from the ventricle to the great vessels to the different parts of the body. And as they don't have enough time to get filled, they, there is not enough blood to be pumped to the different parts of the body. So the tissues of the body do not get enough oxygenation or nutrition. So this delay is useful because that allows the time for the atria to push the blood to the ventricle and the ventricle has enough time to get filled with blood because the impulses from the AV node have not reached the ventricle yet. The ventricles can relax and get filled adequately and after the delay, the impulses then reach the ventricle allowing them to contract and pump enough blood to the different parts of the body. So the AV nodal delay is useful because it provides time for the atrium to complete its contraction and thereby finish the atrial emptying and the ventricles are therefore able to get adequately filled before they contract. So the AV nodal delay is useful because it provides time for completion of the contraction of the atrium and there is enough time for the atrium to contract and empty its blood into the ventricle leading to adequate ventricular filling before the ventricles can contract. The impulses from the AV node or the atrioventricular node passes through the bundle of His to the left and right bundle branch and to the conduction pathways or the Purkinje fibers. And as it passes through these parts of the conducting system, the impulses spread to the ventricular muscles. And as the impulses pass through the tissues of the ventricle, there is a certain direction through which the cells are activated. So as the impulses pass through the ventricles of the heart, the muscle cells of the ventricles of the heart get depolarized, leading to the action potential that is generated in the muscle cells that then leads to the contraction of the ventricular muscles. This depolarization of the ventricle occurs in a certain direction. At first, the left side of the interventricular septum is depolarized and this wave of depolarization passes through the middle of the interventricular septum to the right side of the septum. So the Activation of the septum occurs from the left to the right. And from here, the impulses pass through the interventricular septum to the anteroseptal region of the ventricular myocardium, reaching the apex of the heart. And from the apex, the impulses pass through the ventricular wall to reach the atrioventricular groove. And this occurs in the direction of endocardial to epicardial surface. 
So from the apex, the imbuses pass through the ventricular wall to the AV groove. The direction of endocardial, that is from inside the heart to the epicardial surface. The endocardial surface is the surface inside the heart and the epicardial is the outer layer of the heart. So the impulses pass through the ventricular wall from the endocardial surface that is the inner layer of the heart to the epicardial surface which is the outer layer of the heart. And the last parts of the heart to be activated are the posterobasal portion of the left ventricle, the pulmonary conus, that is the part from where the pulmonary artery arises and the uppermost portion of the interventricular septum. So these are the last parts to be activated, that is the posterobasal portion of the left ventricle the pulmonary conus and the uppermost portion of the interventricular septum. There are certain features that makes the cells in the conducting system distinct from the other cells in the heart. That is, the cells in the conducting system have fewer striations when compared to the other cells in the heart and also when compared to the other muscle cells in the heart the cells in the conducting system have indistinct boundaries that is the boundaries in the cells of the conducting system are not as distinct as the other muscle cells in the heart and also the SA node and the AV node have some small round cells which has lesser number of organelles than the other cells in the cardiac muscle. And these cells are also connected by gap junctions. And by research, the scientists speculate that these cells are probably the actual pacemaker cells. And they are also called as the P cells. These are the conducting speeds of different tissues in the conduction system. The SA node conducts impulses at the rate of 0.05 meter per second. The atrial pathways have the rate of 1 meter per second. The AV node conducts impulses at the rate of 0.05 meter per second. The bundle of his and the ventricular muscles just like the atrial pathways, they also conduct impulses at the rate of 1 meter per second. The fastest of these is the Perkin J system, which conducts impulses at the rate of 4 meters per second. These are the times of appearance of cardiac impulse in different parts of the heart. You know that the SA node is the primary pacemaker of the heart. The impulses are first generated in the SA node and from there it reaches the AV node within 0.03 seconds. And from here the impulses then travel through the bundle of His and you can notice that there is a delay in transmission here. So from the SA node the impulses have quickly passed to the AV node within 0.03 seconds. But at the AV node, there is a delay due to which it takes some time for the impulses to pass from the AV node to the bundle of his and the bundle branches. By the time the impulses reaches the bundle branches, it takes around 0.16 second. And from there, it goes to the Perkin J fibers where it takes around 0.18 second and once the impulses reach the apex it's already 0.2 second so here in this description you can clearly see that there is a delay occurring in the av node 
due to which it takes some time for the imbuses to reach the ventricles. So uh, to summarize, there is a certain direction through which the electrical activity spreads through the heart. And as you know, the SA node is the primary pacemaker from which the imbuses are first generated. So the imbuses from the SA node pass to the AV node and to the left atrium. And then the atria are both activated. That is the right and left atria are activated together at the same time. From there, the imbuses pass from the AV node to the rest of the conducting system of the heart, leading to the spread of imbuses through the ventricles. And in the ventricle, the activation of the muscles of the ventricle occurs in a certain direction. So first there is septal activation proceeding from the left side of the interventricular septum to the right side. From there, the impulses pass through the anterior septal region of the myocardium, reaching the apex of the heart. And from there, the impulses pass from the endocardial surface to the epicardial surface. So the impulses pass through the anterior septal region, reaching the apex of the heart. From there, it spreads throughout other parts of the ventricular muscle, proceeding from the inside of the heart, that is from the inner layer or the endocardial surface to the outer layer, which is the epicardial surface. This way, most parts of the ventricle get activated. And then the last parts of the heart to be activated are the Posterior basal portion of the left ventricle, that is the posterior basal portion of the left ventricle, and the pulmonary conus, which is the part from where the pulmonary artery arises. And another last portion to be activated is the upper portion of the interventricular septum. So the Atria are activated first, followed by the ventricle, and in the ventricle, there is a certain direction through which the activation occurs. That is, first the septum is activated, proceeding from the left to the right, and then the anteroseptal region of the ventricular myocardium is activated. The activation spreads then to the apex of the heart, and from the apex, the muscle cells in the ventricle are then activated and this activation proceeds from the endocardium to the epicardium and then the last portions of the heart to be activated are the posterior basal portion of the left ventricle, the pulmonary conus and the uppermost region of the interventricular septum. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And if there is any other topic that you would like me to cover, please also let me know that in the comments. And please share the video and subscribe so that you can get notified whenever I post a new video. Until then, happy learning.